first question that you might ask yourself is, well, why would I even choose Linux anyway? There are so many great operating systems out there. I've been using one of them already. Why should I even consider the switch? Well, if you took the decision of taking this course, obviously you have made a decision with some sort of justification. But if you're still up to making the decision, I'm going to help you. For those who are short on money, here's the great news. Linux is totally free of charge. Most people that I recognize from the Linux community simply have no money to purchase a new operating system or even to make those upgrades. If you happen to have some sort of Windows operating system and wanted to upgrade, you would have to pay at least $100 in order to do so. Well, it turns out that with Linux, that doesn't happen. Updates are free and also continuous. Every other day, there's at least some sort of upgrading to be done, and you don't need to pay for that. So that's pretty great if you want to spend no money on upgrading to the system. Another particularly useful reason for many people is the fact that Linux is so lightweight. If you have some experience with your computer, you will notice that Windows and Mac OS X systems consume a lot of resources. For example, if you wish to run Mac OS X, you'd better have a Mac computer, such as a MacBook or an iMac. That's really frustrating if you want to take advantage of that experience from Mac OS X. It is indeed a great system, but you need to have the appropriate equipment to run it. And that can be really, really expensive. Windows works on most machines, but you can tell by the looks of it that it spends a lot of resources lots of memory, and probably some disk space. I recall the very last time I installed Windows, it took me a lot of gigabytes. Well, in some Linux systems, you can go up to 500 Macs. That's pretty light, if you ask me. Regarding memory consumption, Linux is also very lightweight. Depending on the desktop environment you choose, you can go to as little as 200 Macs of memory. That's just food for thought for you to consider. Linux can go from all the way very simple and very little energy consuming to a very much top-end experience compared to other corporate operating systems, such as Windows or Mac OS X. Another big feature about Linux is that it is open. Being open means that the source code for the system is free to look at. And because of that, it is subject to bug fixes and voluntary contributions to it. You can go ahead to the Linux kernel website, take a look at the source code, and if you believe there's something that needs to be done in order to make it better, you can do so. You don't need to ask permission of anyone, you just do it and submit the proposal of the fix. Most likely it will be included, and you will be a philanthropist from that moment on. Think about it. The fact that it is open means that anyone can use it and anyone can contribute to making it better, unlike other systems that rely on complex reports and bureaucracy in order to make the bugs reach out to the developers. This is a lot better. Another thing that I want to mention, in fact, I believe I already did, is that Linux is very flexible. As I've mentioned, you can mix and match many different components for a complete Linux experience. Linux comprises of a single kernel that it's not much more than 40 megs on total, and then there's this whole set of applications that go on top of it. Unlike Windows or Mac OS X that comprise of a series of different components that make for the entire system, Linux is just a small part of what you usually see in a standard Linux environment. Because of this unique feature of Linux of being so small, you can combine multiple different applications and utilities to create the perfect Linux environment for you. You most likely heard the term distribution. A Linux distribution comprises of the kernel along with a set of applications that the distribution believes it is better for their audience. For example, Ubuntu contains a lot of different applications that allow for an easier transition from another system. Red Hat, for example, is a more server-side solution. It still contains the Linux kernel, but the applications that make Red Hat are more server-oriented. 
such as web servers, perhaps a little more corporate business solution set, or something like that. There are tons and tons of different distributions out there, it's just a matter of preference. I, for example, usually use Arch Linux. Arch Linux is a minimal distribution that allows you to install the Linux kernel along with some core features that make Arch, and then you install as many different packages as you want, including the desktop environment. Arch Linux doesn't enforce you to a particular one, you choose. One big reason that you should be taking this course is because of web development setup. Well, it turns out that most production servers that contain loads of different applications out there, such as Facebook or Twitter, or just about any different application that it's not Microsoft based, is actually run in Linux. So why not bridge the gap a little closer and work in a more production-like environment for the application you're trying to build? If servers already use it, why should we not? I've mentioned previously that closed systems like Windows and Mac OS X require paid support. I mean, you pay for the entire operating system, you come with just a little bit of support, but if you need something serious to be fixed, then you have to pay a lot more. With Linux, that's not the case. Well, entirely, of course. Because Linux is open and free to take a look at, there are some common problems that have already been solved by other people, and most likely there are solutions that you can execute yourself to see that problem fixed. If you had some serious problem that could use something in the terminal to be executed, you could do that in Linux, but in Windows it would be just a little more complicated to fix. Because Linux is open, there's a lot more effort into opening documentation as well. That's all part of the open source philosophy. If the system is open, then people are open as well to share their ideas and their solutions to some problems. So that's a huge advantage just by partaking in this adventure. These are just some of the core values of Linux and its experience. Now it's time we dig deep and start by installing one Linux distribution. I'll see you soon in the next lesson.